In this video, you will learn a new type of angle measure called radians. It's possible that you've stumbled across radians accidentally on your calculator and wondered what that RAD meant. By the end of this lesson, you will know how to determine angle measures using radians, how to convert angle measures from degrees to radians and from radians into degrees, and how to use radian measures to easily find the lengths of arcs. To help you get the most out of this lesson, please pause now and open your copy of the capture sheet linked above if you have not already done so. You will be asked to take notes and answer questions on the capture sheet during the video. You may also want to stop the video from time to time to interact with the GeoGebra applet posted on this page below the video to recreate what is happening in the video. You already know that a degree is 1 360th of a circle, but that is actually somewhat arbitrary. As you saw in the video on the discussion page, the reasons are historical, not mathematical. We just as easily could have measured angles in sixteenths of a circle, or as a percentage, or hundredth of a circle, and perhaps that was the idea you thought of at the discussion. But there is a way to measure angles which is purely mathematical and not based in any culture or convenience. We start by placing our angle so it is the central angle of a circle. Then it intercepts the arc of the circle with a length of A, and it, it, and it is formed by two radii of the circle of length R. How many radii of length R will fit along the arc of length A? And will that answer change if the circle is larger or smaller? Let's take a look at the GeoGebra applet posted below. Notice that as the angle measure gets larger and larger, more radii will fit along the arc. That may not seem surprising, but notice that the number of radii along the arc stays the same, no matter the size of the radius of the circle. So the number of radii that fit along the arc is only dependent on the size of the angle and not the size of the radius. Since that's true, we can define the radian measure of the angle to be equal to the number of radii fitting along the arc. In other words, the radian measure of the angle is equal to the ratio of the length of the arc to its radius. Pause here and record this definition in your capture sheet. Since the ratio of arc length to radius is the same no matter the size of the radius and only dependent on the angle, Let's choose a circle size that will make calculations easy. If we place the angle in a circle of radius 1 called a unit circle, we notice a special relationship between the arc length and the number of radians. We know already that the number of radians is defined as the arc length divided by the radius. In the unit circle, the radius is 1. So that means for unit circles, the radian measure of the angle equals the arc length. We now have a tool to help us discover radian measures of different angles. In a circle of radius 1, the measure of a central angle in radians equals the length of the arc. If we can figure out the arc length for a given central angle, we will know the radian measure. So let's look at some common angle measures and use a unit circle to help us find their corresponding radian measures. 
And as we do, we will record our radian equivalents on double number lines on our capture sheet. Feel free to pause the video as needed to record our findings. Let's start with a full circle. We know that a full circle is 360 degrees. So how many radians is that? The arc length of a full circle is just its circumference, which is the diameter times pi. If the radius is 1, then the diameter would be 2, and the circumference, or arc length of the full circle, is 2 pi. Since it's a unit circle, the arc length equals the radian measure. So we know that 360 degrees is equivalent to 2 pi radians, or approximately 6 and 28 hundredths. And take a look at the diagram, and we see that, sure enough, there are little more than six copies of the radius along the perimeter of the circle. In our double number line, we can record that in every circle, 360 degrees equals 2 pi radians. What about a straight angle? We know a straight angle is 180 degrees, which intercepts a semicircle. What would that be in radians? Well, in the case of a 180 degree angle, the arc length is half the circle. So for a unit circle, instead of two times pi, the arc length is just half that, or just pi. Since in a unit circle, the radians equals the arc length, we get that 180 degrees equals pi radians, or approximately three and 14 hundredths. And again, looking at our unit circle, we see that little more than three copies of the radius fit along the semicircle. We can record in our double number line that in every circle, 180 degrees equals pi radians. Let's keep going and take a look at a right angle, or 90 degrees. A 90 degree central angle intercepts a quarter circle. In our unit circle, the full circle was two pi, so a quarter circle would have one-fourth of that, or pi over two. In a unit circle, the radian measure equals the arc length, so we know that 90 degrees is equivalent to pi over two radians, or approximately one in 57 hundredths. And we see again in our diagram, and we can state confidently, that in any circle, 90 degrees is pi over two radians. And this gives us a strategy to find the radian equivalents for common angles. Knowing that a full circle, or 360 degrees, is 2 pi radians, we can divide it into four equal pieces and find the radian equivalents in 90 degree inc increments. 90 degrees is pi over 2 radians, 180 degrees is pi radians, and 270 degrees is 3 pi over 2 radians. Pause here and check the math for yourself and record these findings on your capture sheet. Let's do the same trick to find the radian measure every 45 degrees. To do that, we divide our circle into eight equal pieces. What would be the radian equivalents now? Notice that as the radian tick marks go up by pi over 4 each time. Pause here and try to fill out the radian equivalents on your capture sheet. If we start at pi over 4 and increase by pi over 4 each interval, we get radian measures for each 45 degree interval. Did you get them right? Try it again for a circle divided into twelfths or 30 degrees. We can find the radian equivalents of 30, 60, 90, 120 degree angles, and so on. Pause here and try to find out or fill out the, rate, the equivalents on your capture sheet. Notice that you will be counting radian measures by pi over 6 this time. If we start at pi over 6 and increase by pi over 6 for each interval, we get radian measures for every 30 degree interval. How did you do? At this point, you're probably wondering if this process works to convert any angle from degrees into radians. Well, what about angle measures that aren't easy fractions of a circle? In geometry, we often use the Greek letter theta to represent the measure of an angle. So perhaps we have an angle with a measure of theta degrees. If this angle were a central angle of a circle, what fraction of the circle would it be? Since there are 360 degrees in a full circle, this angle would be theta over 360 of a circle. 
And since we go full circle is two pi radians, then this angle is theta over 360 of two pi radians, which simplifies to theta times pi over 180. And that gives us our conversion formula. An angle that is theta degrees will be theta times pi over 180 radians. Remember that in a circle, the central angle is always the same angle measure as the intercepted arc. We can express the size of the angles or arcs as either radians or degrees. In general, you will find that angle measures are given in degrees while arc measures are given as radians. To convert degrees into radians, you simply multiply your degree measure by pi over 180. Pause here and add these notes to your capture sheet. Using the formula you just learned to convert these degree measures into radians, pause here and record your answers in the capture sheet. To convert to radians, we need to multiply each degree measure by pi over 180. Simplifying those expressions gives us precise radian measures, which are the preferred expressions. Notice, for 240 degrees, we get the same answer we found in our double number line. If you need a decimal approximation, simply multiply by your favorite approximation of pi to get the radian measures rounded to the nearest hundredth. Did you get them right? To convert radian measures into degrees, we simply perform the inverse operations. We know that an angle of theta degrees times pi over 180 gives us the angle in n radians. If we multiply both sides of this equation by 180 over pi, we find that n radians times 180 over pi gives us theta degrees. Pause here and record this conversion formula on your capture sheet. Now try using this formula to convert these radian measures into degrees. Pause here and record your answers on your capture sheet. You should have multiplied each radian measure by 180 over pi, which simplifies to give us precise answers. Again, notice that pi over 3 simplified to 60 degrees, which agrees with what we found earlier. When solving radian problems, it is usually preferred to give precise answers as expressions with pi. Check your teacher to see what they want. By measuring angles and radians, mathematicians are able to make a lot of connections, but the best application of radians is how simple it makes finding the length of an arc. Recall that arc length is different than arc measure. Arc measure is the measure of the central angle, but arc length is the actual length of the arc, as if you were tracing it with a piece of string. In a unit circle, the arc length is the same as the radian measure, but now we want to find the arc length for all circles. We start with the relationship that radians is the quotient between arc length and radius. Simple algebra tells us that in all circles, arc length equals radian measure times radius. Pause here and record this easy, simple formula in your capture sheet. Let's see how this plays out in two sim similar examples. Here, we are trying to find the arc length for two arcs intercepted by the same size angle, 2 and 25 hundredths radians. One circle has a radius of 1 and a half, while the other has a radius of 1. How long is the arc in each intercepted circle? Remember, you will find arc length by simply multiplying the radians by the radius, which means that we are just multiplying the radian measure 2 and 25 hundredths by 1 and 5 tenths for the first circle and 1 for the second circle giving us arc lengths of 3 and 375 thousandths inches and 2 and 25 hundredths inches, respectfully. And these answers make sense, as the larger circle should have the larger arc length, even though the angle measures are the same. And it's worth repeating again that when the radius is equal to 1, the arc length is the same as the radian measure. This is always true and proves to be very useful in trigonometry. And now you know how to find the angle measures using radians, convert angle measures between radians and degrees, and use radian measures to find the lengths of arcs.